you have your talk. Yesterday, we talked about your talk and how to, you know, set up your talk and how to get ready and prepared for you to speak. We talked about knowing that thing, who you are, that one thing that makes you unique, which Chef Maria talked about. And then we heard all the things from uh, Nakia. We heard, you know, Lauren talk about, um, you know, the positioning, how you present yourself. And today, now you have your talk. How, what do you do to get booked? The first thing I want to share with you is that you have to know what type of speaker you are for that specific event that you are going to speak at, right? There are several different types of speakers. There's like 18 different types of speaker. And if you were here yesterday, Lauren spoke to you about the comedic speaker. That is a specific speaker as well. All right. So for just for today, I want to just share a few um, that is more of, you know, into the vein of what speakers usually talk about. Inspirational speakers are those speakers that uses the stories to inspire you. It's always a heartwarming story, right? And then you have a transformational speaker where the, when they're on the stage, their particular role is to transform your mind. When they're done off the stage, you are ready to go do what they told you to do. A motivational speaker is one who has a wall spring of enthusiasm. They're up there. They, it's riveted in pivotal life experiences and they motivate you and you're ready to go and you're in the moment and you're so inspired inspired, right? And then the educational speaker is those who speak on a specific subject matter with a wealth of informative information, the do's and don'ts, the facts and figures. Then you have an industry speaker, right? That is really specific to a certain relevant type of industry. For example, you will go sometimes to a publishing event or you can go to, you know, a uh, accounting event or they have these big events that's really industry specific where the speaker is speaking on that subject matter and that subject matter only. And then you have the trainer, right? Which is the people who do the workshops and the, um, you know, the hands-on training where most of the time there is some type of activity that happens in those uh, environment. Now, if you don't hear anything from me today, this is what I want you to take away. There's three things that you have to do when you stand on the stage to speak. Number one, you have to share your story. Why? It hits the emotion of the individual. It hits the emotion of the audience, right? So it's relatable. Number two, it's the mission of why you are there. It's knowing the audience and the mission because your mission is their mission. And then the third thing is the position. You have to make sure that you're helping them position themselves. Why? Because your speaking engagement is all about them. It is what is in it for them. Now you have to promote yourself as a speaker and it comes down to one word and it's presence. How do you show up? What do you look like? Do I want to invite you to speak at my event, right? I need you to know that you are the gift. You, madam, you, sir, you, all of you that are here today, you are the gift. Your speaker brand is built on your gift. Everything you do is built on you. I'll give you an example. There are four great speakers that I want to highlight today. Number one, Lisa Nichols, right? For the, as long as you have been listening to Lisa Nichols, she tells the same story. She was homeless. She was on food stamps. She was beaten by her husband and she had a child. It's the same story for the last 30 years, but her brand is built on that story and she's relatable and people know her, like her and trust her. Then we have Les Brown. His whole brand is built on the fact that he was dyslexic, right? And here he is, one of the greatest speakers of our time. Then there's David Goggins. This is a man who was so fat when he was a young child and then told himself he's going to lose weight and he is now the highest ranking Navy SEAL in the country and is a ultra marathoner because of you know his story. And then we have Nick Viacek. This is the guy who have no hands, no feet, but he's a world renowned speaker. What sells him? His story, right? So it's very important about the story. 
Leverage your network. Who is in your network? Who do you know in your industry? Who do you know in your organization, in Queen City Women in Business, on LinkedIn? Who do you know that knows you, that can trust you, that knows that you have the speaking engagement, that you have the speaker sheet, that you have the speaker brand? If you don't tell them, they don't know. Use social media and video content. A lot of times people say, I don't like to be on social media. Well, if you're a speaker, you have to like to be on social media, right? Because people are going to want to know who you are. What do you speak about? What do you know? Can I go find them somewhere so I can check them out before I hire them or even want to go to listen to them? Use your email list. Let me say this to you. Um, social media, you do not own one lick of social media. And if they ever go down, you lose everything. So make sure you are building your email list. Pitch to events host, pitch to them, let them know that you have this content that you want to share and that you're a speaker. Here are five C's that I want you to write down today or take a screenshot of this. The five places that you can go find speaking engagements. It's churches, conferences, colleges, corporations and clubs. Do not forget that. It's not only on social media. And when I say clubs, I'm talking about Boys and Girls Club of America. I'm talking about the YMCA. I'm talking about the Rotary Club. I'm talking about the Black 100 Black women. Those are clubs that you can find speaking engagements as well. All right. What am I doing here? All right. Let me just move this forward. Own your space, your sphere of influence. What does that mean? You are the expert in your speaking topic, in what you speak about. Own it. Position yourself as an expert, right? Learn all you can learn. Become a student of it. Learn it. Know it. Inside out, upside down. All those alms that Lauren talked about yesterday, Lauren says, when you say alms, it's because you are not 100% confident in what you're talking about. Get rid of the arms and learn your industry, learn your topic inside out. Build relationships with your audience as you're on Facebook, as you're on the podcast, as you're on LinkedIn, as you're doing your Facebook lives, make sure you are having communication with your audience. Find questions to ask so that they can respond so you know what they are looking for. Whether online or in person, show up consistently in spaces where you your influence can grow because that's what people want to see. And baby, host your own events. Host your own speaking engagements. Get someone to videotape you. Get someone to make sure that you can post those things online to show that I'm showing up. I know what I'm talking about and you can book me. And this is all about you being a confident speaker. And then visibility and credibility. Let me just share this with you. Collecting testimonials and endorsement is a big thing. When people are booking you for speaking engagements, they want to know who you are. Let me go see what people are saying about her. Let me go see if there's somebody endorse her. Like yesterday, Dawn Nicole told us that she sent some names over for speaking engagements. That's called endorsements, baby, right? And you need to have that somewhere on your website, on your Facebook page, on your LinkedIn page. Let you let people know that, hey, I've been endorsed by Donna Cole of Queen City Women in Business, and here is what people are saying about me. Get media or media or video coverage. I don't know if you know this, but there is an organization called H-A-R-O. H-A-R-O is help a reporter out. Reporters are always looking for speakers, especially when things are happening, right? Domestic Violence Month, um, Breast Cancer Month, all these different things. Reporters are always looking for someone to speak on the news, even if it's 10 minutes, five minutes, three minutes. Go to haro.com, find out the subject matter that you speak about and look to see if any uh, reporter is looking for the subject matter that you speak on. So yeah, you're gonna thank me later for that. Publish content consistently. Make sure you're always posting. Make sure you're showing up. Make sure you're giving good energy, right? And good content for the things that you speak about. Have a YouTube channel. Make the YouTube channel become like your, your speaker series so that people can know, like you, trust you, and book you. And if you don't have a book, you're missing something, okay? Because let me tell you this. When you are an author, you are likely to get booked 50% more than if you don't have a book and you will likely get paid 
50% more than what the normal speaker would get paid without having a book. So that's just one thing. If you don't have a book yet, make sure you are putting that in your repertoire. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll turn it over to Dawn Nicole to continue. Wonderful. First of all, wow. Um, like, and I was trying to keep up. I was harrow.com. Y'all check out the links because as each speaker gives a reference, I'm working hard to put those in the links. Totally amazing. So we're going to turn it over to our next team of speakers. So speaker number two, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Come on, Lauren. Hello. Thank you, good Jones. morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Joan. That was an amazing kickoff to today's session. Lots of great information. And we've still got a lot of great information to still share. So I'm going to get this all set up. And do you see my screen that says your speaker one sheet? Yes. yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So let me make sure that I can see everybody. Okay. So your speaker one sheet. Uh, raise your hand. Give me a wave if you have a speaker one sheet. What about a capability statement? Okay. Okay, cool. Very good. Very good. So we're going to talk about what your speaker one sheet is and how it is similar, but different from your capability statement. Okay. So your speaker one sheet is your speaker resume. This is a very often a doc document that people will ask you for, or that you can go ahead and have ready when people say, Hey, can you send me some information about your talk? That's your speaker one sheet. It's all together. And guess what? Your speaker one sheet doesn't have to be one page. It can be two pages. It can be multiple pages. Uh, mine's two pages. I'm going to show you mine in a minute, but it's, it's, it's your highlight. It's who you are. It's a high level of yourself, your bio, what you talk about, who you've spoken to already. So it's again, and it's like your speaker resume. So let's talk about what goes on your speaker one sheet. So this is my speaker one sheet. So this is what goes on your speaker one sheet. I'm also going to show you Chef Maria's capability statement and, and the differences between that and a speaker one sheet in just a moment. So, oh, and by the way, you're going to get a template. You get a template and you get a template and you get a template. So anyone who needs a speaker one sheet, I'm going to put a template for Canva in the chat. And then Don Nicole, I believe you also have a PDF that I've sent you. So she can send that out to everybody as well. So speaker one sheet, you want people to know who you are. So you're going to put your headshot on there. And actually, I'm going to turn my cursor on if I can move this. There we go. Okay. You want to show your beautiful face and you're, you want a good, clear, professional headshot on your speaker one sheet, okay? It's a vibe. It's who you are. Make sure this is a professional picture. This isn't any car selfies, ladies. This is a professional picture, okay? Then, of course, you want your name and your title or what it is that you are all about, a summary of you. Okay. Technically, my title is founder and CEO, but instead I chose to put corporate MC, professional speaker, and presentation skills trainer, because that just kind of encapsulates what I do. You're going to want to put a brief bio here. This is actually, it looks a little bit longer, but it's only like, I think it's three sentences. So you can write a longer bio if you want. You can make your headshot a little smaller and fill it in. But this is just, again, a very super high level. What is also nice about the speaker one sheet, I do this all the time, is people say, hey, what's your bio? I just copy this from my speaker one sheet and send it over to them. So that's how they can introduce me. So very simple, very easy. And it's something that they can put like in a conference brochure who the speakers are. This can also be the bio there. And then you've got your contact information. I have mine here at the bottom. And I have this on both pages, as you can see. And then who you've worked with, you can put logos, you can put organizations. If you've spoken at your own company, I know someone put in the chat, I think it was Kimberly had spoken for her own organization. Uh, you can put any anywhere that you've spoken, anywhere people, it doesn't have to be paid either. It can be just anywhere, anywhere that you've spoken that you can, you can put down here or any companies that you've worked with. Logos are great, or you can just list the companies if you'd like or organizations. And then your speaker topics. So, and I will also say there was some feedback um, or uh, information in the sign up sheet uh, when you registered online about I'm trying to decide between two keynotes. Well, guess what? I have two. So you can have two. Uh, if they're related, 
that's great if they're completely separate. Like this is about perseverance and this one's about public speaking. Stick them both on there. It can't hurt because here's the thing. If they see both of them, they may book you for one and be like, oh, this would be a good one for a breakout. Or, oh, this might be good for a future topic or this might be good for a virtual session or there may be ways to incorporate both. So don't shy away from including all of the potential topics. And then, so I have my signature keynotes. You have the title. You want it to be kind of like a fun, interesting title picture. You're going to a conference and you're trying to decide between multiple breakouts. You want your title to be something kind of catchy. And then you want the description to be a little bit more detailed and give people an idea of what they're going to learn from your key, your keynote. You always want to include like takeaways, what you're going to get. And then the seventh thing I have down here is client testimonials. And we're going to talk about how to get testimonials, as Jones already talked about, in just a little bit. So stay tuned for that on later later part of this call. So have the client testimonials here. I have one for each talk. So it just kind of gives you a well-rounded, quick testimonial about each. So this is my speaker one sheet. Of course, you can see it's two pages. And then I'm going to show you the first two pages of Chef Maria's capability statement. So some of you said that you have a capability statement. So you can use this to create your speaker one sheet, because if you've already put it together, you've got a lot of the assets already done. So she's got her professional one sheet or her professional headshot. What I would say is for the for the actual one sheet, I would just make it bigger so people can see who you are. She's got her name and title down here, which is perfect. And then she has her brief bio here. You would have a little bit more space to include a little bit more about you on your speaker one sheet. And again, that could be how people introduce you. And then your contact information, which is down here. And then who you've worked with. She's got these beautiful logos here. People like to see logos they're familiar with. So as soon as you have worked with an organization, please feel free to use their logo. And I know this is recorded, but I'm still going to go out on a limb and say, uh, it's better to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. So you don't always have to say, can I use your logo? If And Don Nicole, you might slap my hand with that, but I cool agree. Okay. All right. Yes. Until they tell you to take it down, use it. You worked with them. Okay. So <laughs> now we have that a little part out of the way. And then the speaker topic. So here's, she's got these great little images here. Uh, you could definitely incorporate those. And then she has bullet points of the topics that she discusses for each one of these. You can use this if you don't want to have signature talks, if you just talk about general topics, but as a keynote speaker, which is like the primary speaker, we, we talked about that definition yesterday. I would encourage you to have the actual topic or your key signature topic, and then you can have the additional topics that you can discuss further down if you wanted to do bullet points there. And then client testimonials. I think that was the, she doesn't have those on this, but I know she has testimonials. So you would just add that onto your speaker one sheet. So here's an example of how you can take your capability statement and transform it into a speaker one sheet with just a few steps. And she also has her certifications, which of course, look at those, super impressive. So that's a nice thing that you can also add onto your speaker one sheet. So cool. Uh, and then this is kind of the skeleton. You're not going to, don't worry, you're not going to get an orange and teal when yours is going to be black and white with boxes on, um, uh, on Canva. And actually I'll just go ahead and put that in the chat. Don't start, stop listening to me. Don't stop listening to me. Uh, just because I put this link in the chat, don't get distracted and start creating your own, your own speaker one sheet. Now is not the time, but save that for later. Okay. Save it for later. So, uh, but yes, these are the different sections. And then I do see in the chat, Nika asked, how often should you update your speaker sheet? You know what, Nika, I have 11 versions of my speaker one sheet and I've been speaking for maybe two years on a professional level. So I would say date it as often as you like, as often. If you get a big speaking gig and you want to put that logo on there, swap everything out. Just make sure that you've moved the other one and you've got the new one. There's nothing wrong with having a more enhanced speaker one sheet. So that's a great question. And then Yaz said, adding industry codes, part of the industry or necessary. Um, that's a good question. I, I'm i not that familiar with if that's a great idea or not. I think it might depend on you. That might be something that would make more sense for a capability statement versus, uh, okay, I'm seeing some nods. Uh, yeah, I agree. Else? Oh, Nicole, okay. 
Okay, she agrees. So yeah. So for the speaker one sheet, you don't have to be, it's more of a high level, whereas the capability statement is a little bit more granular. But having those industry codes is always going to help if you're talking with people and they are curious about the industry codes. So it's a good thing to have, but you don't have to put it on your speaker one sheet. So again, here are the sections, headshot, name, company, past speaking engagements, your bio, your contact information, your speaking topics, your client testimonials. You don't have to have multiple speaking topics. You can just have one can have three. I will tell you personally, I think that if you have a ton of speaker topics on here, it makes me think that you're uncluttered or that you're cluttered. You don't know exactly what your special sauce is. I had somebody send me a list of topics that he could talk about, and it was literally 40 topics. And I was like, well, if you can talk about 40 things, what are you really good at? I mean, I've got two, you know, so think about that. I would think maybe three Five is pushing it because how much can we really be an expert in five different topics? So you can have your sweet sauce and you can have some other like additional topics you can talk about, but those are the ones people want to know that you're really good about this topic or these few topics. So that's your speaker one sheet. And now we're going to move into the next section of our program today, which is we're going to talk about some super quick tips about collecting testimonials, finding speaking gigs, reaching out to get booked, and marketing tactics. So what we thought we would do is we're going to do a quick round robin. It's going to be round robin with myself and Nika and Chef Maria. And we're going to share our top tip for each of these categories. So I will kick it off and then I'll hand it over to Nika for her tip on testimonials. So my number one tip for collecting testimonials, sometimes it can be awkward, right? Um, what do you think about me? <laughs> what are they supposed to say? So I like to formalize the process, okay? So what I do is I'll send out a Google form after the event and say, thank you so much. I would love to get some feedback on your experience of working with me before the event, during the event, anything that you, any recommendations, what was your best, what was your favorite part? And I will take what I've seen on their form, their favorite part, and I will see, hmm, I wonder if I could use that for a testimonial. And then I will create a testimonial because people like things easy. And I will actually send it back to them and say, hey, thank you so much for filling out the form. Would you be okay with providing me with a testimonial? I loved working with you and I would love more companies to work with like you, more clients like you. So here's a little bit of language. Would you like to add or change or, or use this as a template? A lot of times they'll be like, that looks great. Thanks so much. And then now you've got a testimonial. So that's my tip. How about you, Nika? Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, so for me, I like systems and social media. So systems could be anything like SurveyMonkey or like you just mentioned, sending out a Google form and saying, hey, I would love your feedback on, you know, what your takeaways were from my talk or something like that. Um, and then social media, like if I have posted a video and someone was there and if they say something, if they say, oh my God, this was life-changing. I started applying the tips right away. Thank you so much, Nika. Easy to apply. I capture that. It is a testimonial. So I look for testimonials in all places. If they put something on my email, they send me a message via email, I capture that as a testimonial. If they text me, right, and say whatever they say about their experience, I capture that. So you can have a system, which is something like SurveyMonkey or a Google form, or you could simply use social media. And if they say anything under your post or under your video, I, can, I usually capture those as testimonials as well. What about okay. you, Chef Maria? How do you capture your testimonials. Thank you. Thank you, Nika. Well, what I do is like, you see, I have the uh, QR code on my virtual background that is on the final screen of my presentation. And I use Linktree and I love Linktree because I can change what's on the Linktree through my, through my phone. I can turn links on or off. So I start putting a survey form out there. So when they scan my QR code at the end of the presentation, when everything, when everybody's still happy, they're still in the room, you know, based on what I do, they've got some dessert in their stomach. So, you know, the endorphins are, you know, uh, working in my favor too, but to have them do it while they're still in the room. Uh, and also, I'm going to start, I thought of this later for something I have coming up is using that link tree and seeing who's, who submitted the surveys and offering a little free treat. 
because I want those surveys. I want those testimonials because I found doing things after the fact, as we've all probably learned before, when we do the forms, we do the email or trying to do the social media, you know, LinkedIn and get them after the fact, it's really hit and miss in terms of the number of responses that you get. And you think that was a great session and I know this person loved it and if I could just get them to capture it. So I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna start using the link tree with the link on there to the form, fill it out and I have a little free treat package for you that you can take away immediately. Cause testimonials- Yes, what? sorry. What'd you say, bribery works? <laughs> bribery works every time everybody, yes. <laughs> awesome. Great tips. I didn't mean to cut you cut you off, Chef Maria. Where was that? Oh no, no, I'm done. That's it. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So how to find speaking gigs. So we're gonna we're gonna run through this super quick. My top tip is LinkedIn. Find out where people are posting events. Find out a lot of times they'll put out calls for speakers or where my colleagues are speaking. I have a lot of speaker contacts. By the way, everyone in here, we are not in competition for speaking gigs. We can refer each other and help each other because if I speak at a conference, they're not gonna want me necessarily for their next conference. They want somebody fresh. Well, I don't need to give them the best referral I can. So that's what I would say is work your network. How about you, Nika? 100%, I say Eventbrite. People are always posting events on Eventbrite, citywide, nationwide. Eventbrite is a great resource in addition to LinkedIn. What about you, Chef Maria? Ask ChatGPT. Ask mm -hmm. ChatGPT what conferences, what speaking gigs. I can't remember exact wording I've used, but I've asked cheap jet. I can't talk. I've asked chat GPT and I was surprised that it came back with conferences and events that were right around me that I didn't even know about. That is brilliant. Yes, there's That's always brilliant. positive activities happening. So thank you both. Okay. Next one, Re how do you reach out to get booked? How do you approach the contact? My top tip is again, I utilize my network. I request a warm intro. If I see somebody else spoke at something, hey, how did you get on that? Or they're gonna be a breakout speaker. Maybe they're still booking speakers. A lot of times when they announce, it's a little bit too late, but maybe for the next time, or maybe there's an upcoming event that they also host. So I do my research, find out they have something coming up. And um, that's how I do it. How about you, Nika? I actually do that. Too. I actually do that too, Lauren. And if I see an event, I'll reach out to the event organizer and ask them, have they booked all of their speakers? Are there, you know, are they looking for additional speakers or if they will at least consider me for next year and I just send over my media kit to them. So I kind of do the same thing. What about you, Chef Maria? I'll reach out to the contact person listed. Also, it's a great idea since conferences always book a year in advance. When you see the conference already took place for this year, go ahead and contact them so you can get on their radar for next year and send me your information so they can, you know, have you in the in the mix as they start that planning. Yep. And I'll also say I get turned down for speaking gigs and it hurts, but you know what? They might come back later and say, well, we, it didn't work out then, but it can work again. So don't be scared to submit for a speaker. It it hurts. It's just like a job. If you're applying for a job and they say, no, thanks. You're like, oh, but there's other jobs. There's other opportunities. So keep, keep going and don't let one get you down. Don't let 10 get you down. Keep going. Keep, keep working on it. Love that. Okay. Last one in this round robin is helpful marketing tactics. How do you showcase and show the world that you are a speaker? Well, for me, my top tip is you literally show them. Make sure that you capture pictures of you standing on the stage. Have that be your LinkedIn banner. Post pictures on your website if you're speaking at events. You have to show people that you are a speaker by showing them you're a speaker. People are very literal. They don't want to have to connect too many dots, show them, make sure that you have pictures of you on stage. And that's going to be our next topic. I'm just giving a little sneak peek, but we're not done with this tip yet. So Nika, how about you? Reels, 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 videos, 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 content, content, content. I am the queen of content. Okay. I don't care where I'm going, what I'm doing. I literally always have my phone in my hand. People love behind the scenes, seeing you getting ready for your speaking engagements. So I say, create videos, create reels, have a, you know, videographer, or, you know, even a friend that has a really great iPhone, you know, just kind of follow you around to literally show 
that you are a speaker. So I agree with Lauren. And I would say also, don't be afraid to set your camera up, start a YouTube channel and literally start speaking on all these social media platforms. TikTok is really great. Um, YouTube and Instagram. And since they have the reels, you get more reach faster as well. So yeah, I agree with that too, Lauren. How about you, Chef Maria? I agree with both of you and I built my YouTube channel up. So I was doing videos of how to's, I mean, speaking gigs, but people want to see you speaking in different ways and different, um, in different situations. I can't think of the right word right now. So I did, you know, how to tips, but there's also clips of me speaking. So it was different mix showing me in different situations, you know, sharing different information, different styles. So YouTube channel, definitely. Uh, and probably like Nika and Lauren both said, getting clips, whether I hired a videographer or whether I had a friend take a photo and showing those little clips and telling, you know, what I did, who was there or what the event was, because that helps build your credibility when people are like, oh, wow, she's speaking at this event. Well, that's really cool. And that helps build your credibility. So that's what I've done. Make it easy. I just wanted to give one last tip. Start a podcast. Start a podcast as well. Podcasting is a great way to showcase your speaking skills and that you are a speaker. So podcast. Could people reach out to you if they're interested in starting one, Nika? How to do yes, it? I have a podcast. Yes, reach out to me. I can help you. <laughs> and it's free. It's free to start. You can literally do it from your phone. So yes, yes, for sure. Love it. Love it. Well, good. Well, you know, those are some excellent tips. Thank you so much for sharing. And then I'm going to kick it over to Chef Maria, uh, where you're going to be talking about some of the things we actually talked about and the importance of videography and photography. Okay. All right. Give me a second to get my screen up here in the background. While you do that, Chef Maria, I just want to make a quick note. Ladies, we're going to take the questions at the very end. So this is why our speaker is staying on time. It's going to be helpful so we can take some Q&A. All right. Thanks. Chef Maria, over to you. Yes, just one second. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. All the time to have technical difficulties. I apologize, ladies. No worries. Oh, my goodness. If you need, I can talk about pricing for a minute and do my segment and then come back to you, whatever you want. Whatever. Yeah, you go want. ahead and do that. And that way can I'll get that. The for it. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much. Yeah, no problem. All right, ladies. So uh, first of all, thumbs up. Can everyone see my screen that says how I charge my worth? I need to hear from you. I can't see you. Yes. 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 Awesome. Thank yes. you. You got to give me yes. energy, y'all. Y'all got to talk <laughs> back to me. All right. So I am Donna Cole. Very excited to share this topic with you. And listen, normally I don't get involved at all. I just let the professional speakers and everyone do their thing. But I needed to talk about how I command anything I ask for. And I'm not kidding. Like I have receipts, right? So they thought, Donna Cole, you need to be talking about this. And today I have all my speakers tags because literally in a four-year period, I did about 300 speaking gigs. No lie, no, no BS, all right? So I'm gonna tell you how I did it. So number one, how do I charge my worth and how you can too, you absolutely should be taking pictures and you should lean in because I'm gonna tell you how to make your money. Um, let me tell you from galas, right? With, with hundreds of people, with all the money in the city, I'm here for it, okay? So from galas, to corporate speaking gigs, from New Orleans to New York, to Hawaii, to anywhere, right? I want you all to charge your worth. And the reason why I feel comfortable charging my worth and teaching hundreds of coaches how to also use the same pricing strategies is because there's one thing that I know that's very important. And what I know, ladies, is I'm not afraid to ask for the money. So the first thing I'm gonna say today, let me move this out the way. First thing I'm gonna say is that as women, we have to change our relationship with money. I'm gonna say it slow. The reason why we don't ask, right, for a certain amount is because how we've been trained to see money. So I need you, I'm gonna say it again, change your relationship with money because as long as it's gonna be a barrier, it's gonna to continue to be a barrier, right? When we start going over 10,000, we get to the 20,000 and 30,000, we start to cringe a little bit. I don't know. I'm gonna teach you a technique that should change that, okay? Because I'll ask for it all day, all right? So let's talk about why I am not afraid to ask for the money. And by doing so, I've lived a great lifestyle. Here's the deal. You're never gonna make the money you don't ask for. You're never going to make the money you don't ask for. You're never going to get it. 
If you don't actually try one time asking for quarter of a million for something, and I'm gonna tell you what types of things, quarter of a million, right? 30,000, 10,000, as long, and here's the thing, the moment you start becoming the free speaker, you're gonna stay the free speaker. Ooh, this is gonna cut. That's why I don't talk much because I y'all have to be ready for the game I wanna play with you. I'm gonna take you way up, right? I'm, I'm gonna take you way up. So this is the thing, stop being the free speaker. If you don't want to be the free speaker, don't be the free speaker. When I first started out, I was taking any and everything. I was doing rotary like Joan said, and trust me, you have to start somewhere. I'm not knocking the free speaker, but if you must do it for free, you need to absolutely make sure that you're getting a couple of things real quick that are worth money. You need to A, make sure that you negotiate something that sounds like this. If I speak for free, will you introduce me to the other people in the region who do what you do? Number one. Number two, if I speak for free, I must get five testimonials, right? Number three, right? I, I want y'all to check out the strategy because I'm the queen of strategy. I know how to get to the money and I teach anyone who will listen how to do the same. All right. So that's the first thing. If you must do free, you should always get something out of it. That's that's the first thing. But secondly, above and beyond that, there must come a time, ladies, where you have to decide you will no longer speak for free and where you have spoken for free. You need to let them know the moment that changes. Hey, I know last year I spoke for free, but this year here's my new one sheet capability. Right. Here's my new speaker sheet. Here are my new prices. Otherwise, people will always call you for the free stuff. And Sandy, no way in the world am I paying money to get on somebody's stage unless it makes absolute business sense. I'm not paying just to speak. There's too many free opportunities, which Joan T. Randall just shared. So that's the thing, ladies. If you're afraid to ask for the money, someone is going to get the money. They're going to pay someone. Might as well be you. All right. So let's keep going. So why, why am I this confident? Donna Cole, oh my gosh, you're so arrogant. I'm not. I'm confident. And that's how the men get paid what they want. Here's why. I'm keenly aware of my unique value. I'm keenly aware of it. You see, I'm a rare breed and you are too. You just got to really tap into the thing that makes you unique. See, not only do I understand business, so I understand my way around the boardroom, but I also have the creative background, short films, theater, casting director. So what, Dawn? What's the so what of this? So as a result... I understand creative compelling art forms and how to infuse them with profound business concepts. So what, Dawn? So what does that mean? You always have to give the so what of your value. This is something that no one tells you. Everyone says tap into your value, but you need to be able to say, but here's how my value moves the needle. Here's the so what of what I'm good at. We forget the so what. The so what is where your money lives. So I go there and I say, listen, because I have a way of creating compelling art forms and infusing it with business concepts. What that means, organizer, is your audience is guaranteed to leave impacted and transformed in the most memorable way possible. I'm guaranteed to be memorable. I'm guaranteed to transform. If you want that, here's what it costs, okay? So it's not just knowing your value, it's understanding the so what does that mean as a result of your value, so this is what your people are gonna experience. Very important, your money lives on the other side of the so what? Once you think about that. And because we can't really articulate the value, we can't even get to the so what. Is somebody with me? I need somebody to come off mute. Just tell me you're hearing me today. Are y'all hearing me? Is this resonating? I yes? got you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Okay. I'm hearing you loud okay. and clear. Okay. Because yeah. I'm only talking to the women who want to start getting paid. I'm only talking yes. to the women who are trying to do this for a living. Okay. If that's not you and you're okay being free, then this might not be the message for you. All right. So I just want you to know we all have a value. Not only do we tap in it, we need to know how to translate that into money. And the way you do that is understanding the so what. So I'm going to give you something that's called a price check. You're going to price check your talk using an acronym called QUEEN. Appropriately called QUEEN because we're Queen City Women in Business and we keep it QUEEN code. So before you ever present another proposal, before you ever get in front of another stage, another audience, I want you to do this self-assessment, the QUEEN check to price check you, okay? Number one, the Q is for quality. What is the quality of your talk? The uniqueness of your unique value proposition is the you. Your experience is E, elevation and network. So let's break down what it all means. So the Q is this, y'all. What is the quality that a Donna Cole or a Lauren or a Janelle is getting ready to bring to the stage? And by quality, I don't mean how cute your slides are, ladies. I mean, when I show up, 
when I show up, ma'am or sir, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to bring with me is I'm going to have a, me and a member of my team. We're going to have probably about 400 books for your audience. So I'm going to bring books. I'm willing to do a recorded welcome message before I get there. I'm willing to do an interactive poll to make sure that your audience understands and is transformed in the process in real time. I'm going to create the type of audience engagement. And when I'm finished, we're going to have a call to action that moves the needle. Does that sound good? Oh my God, Donna Cole, tell me more, right? I'm trying to tell you how I commanded $15,000 for one hour. I have the receipts. And then I had them buy 400 books. Then I had them pay for my travel, right? And this needs to be the standard of how we show up if this is what you actually want, right? You can have it too. So that's the first thing is what is the quality? And the quality is not just about how you show up that day. It's about what happens before, during, and after. Here's what I'm gonna do, ma'am or sir. Before I get on the stage, I'm gonna have two meetings with you to make sure I'm in sync and I'm on brand with your company. Does this make sense? What theme words would you like me to use? Great. And then during it, here's what's gonna happen. And then afterwards, I'm willing to take a poll and debrief with you. They're paying me for what I do pre, during, and post. Are y'all with me? Hello, is somebody, I'm sorry, is this thing on? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> we're oh, here. Yes. Okay. We're with okay. You. I'm just making sure. We're with you. Okay. It up. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And then the unique value proposition. What is it that I bring that only I can bring that you can only get from me? See, because if they can get it anywhere, then it's not a demand, right? But when I command a certain price, I say, well, wait a minute. You want me to fly to New Orleans and teach agile AI, which isn't being talked about, but I have the background to teach it. Here's my price. The unique value proposition is the thing they can only get when they come to you the way that you can deliver it, right? And then the experience, and here's what no one's telling you, the experience is not just the number of talks you've had. It's also who you talk to. See, it changes the game, Charlotte, if I said, hey, I was actually invited to speak at the White House. Oh, my price just went up, right? So it doesn't matter that I don't have 300 hours of speaking time or that I don't have 30 talks under my belt, right? It also matters not just qu uh, quantity, but quality right? So that's also a part of your experience. And then here's the one I love, elevation. Does my talk have the ability to move the needle in a meaningful way? Meaning is the topic so premium that when I'm finished, right, it's going to elevate the entire audience because I'm going to charge based on that. If I spend 15 minutes sharing something with you and then you go turn around and you make a million dollars with the content I teach, my premium price better, better make sense, right? I know Charlotte's not in, right? So that also goes into it. And then finally, don't forget this part. Let them know you have a big network. And not only do you have the big network, you have the right network. There are lots of organizers who will say, oh, you've got 30,000 people in your network or you have this type of people and we're trying to attract that. We absolutely want to pay you money. So price check yourselves, queens, right? Using the queen code price check. That's how you can start to get paid what you're worth right? And know that they're going to pay somebody anyway. Why are we as women afraid to ask for our money? Who's got your money? I'm going to ask y'all a question. Who has your money, right? Where's your money? Someone has it and they're willing to pay someone. It should be you. All right. So uh, real fast as I wrap up, there are five pricing strategies you should be aware of. When it comes to a speaker, the most popular is the value-based pricing, ladies. This is where you're going to charge based on the value that I just showed you, right? What you're going to deliver to the audience. It's all that feel-good stuff, right? So it's everything I just showed you that's value-based pricing. And for me, that's where I start every time. But then there's also tier-based pricing. And this matters if you're doing a keynote versus a workshop, right? Versus follow-up session. So this is where you price according to what the role that they want you to play that day. Does this make sense, ladies? Not if this number two makes sense, okay? All right, and then number three is market rate pricing. Elisa, this is where you do some research and say, now, wait a minute, I did some research and in Chicago, the going rate for keynote speakers in the construction industry is actually this. So this is where you actually use historical data to see how that market performs. We should be doing this. And then cost plus pricing, Joan, you know all about this. This is where you calculate your costs, your time, your materials, right? And it's really line item pricing. OK, and then you have dynamic pricing. This is where you adjust based on the demand of your talk, event size, location, clients ability to pay and so much more. So you have to have one of these strategies. Not having a strategy is not an option. If you don't have a strategy, this could be why you're not getting paid what you're worth. All right. So I hope this was helpful. And I want to thank everyone for allowing me to share how to get paid what you're worth and how you can, too. Thank you. Wow. Amazing. 
I will turn it over to you, Chef Maria. Did you figure out your situation? You're on mute, so I can't hear you. There we go. Awesome. You ready? I did. Yes. Okay. okay. There you go. Oh, good grief. Sorry. I think I'm just having one of those mornings. That's okay. You're allowed. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. There we go. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Looks great. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I want to talk to you really quickly about the top five photo and video tips. I've used a lot of different photographers, a lot used a lot of different videographers. So I'm going to run through my top tips um, really quickly. When I say include the audience, you want to make sure that the audience shows in your shot. We don't want a picture of only you in everything that you do. There's a, there's a time for solo shots of just a speaker, but the people want to see the audience who's in the shot as well. It gives them an idea of how big they, how big the audience is. They'll look for faces to see if they recognize anybody. They're looking for facial expressions as well. And it also gives you a view of the, the people, the number of people, and the size of the room. Use a pro. We all have our best friend and everybody's got fantastic iPhones, but you need to make sure that you use a pro so you don't have blurry pictures, you don't have shaky pictures, and that there's a purpose behind each photo that's taken. The pictures tell a story and the story that a picture is telling needs to be clear. Now I've used pros and I've had friends take pictures and I've learned my lesson. So I always lean toward pros now. Also a shot list, and this is something that's easy to miss. Fail to plan, plan to fail. The photographers or videographers, they have a creative eye and they'll pick pictures that they think are good, but they might not also be the pictures that you really need. They'll have the photographer's eye, but remember you want these pictures so you can use them on your website, you can use them on YouTube, you can use them wherever you want. Like this picture in the shot list, I wanted him to get it from the back of the room so you could see some of the audience, but you could tell it was a fairly big room. This was just one of the pictures that I had taken. So think through the different shots that you want and list those out and go through them with your photographer or your videographer so you're in sync. And remember, the, the better your list is, it will cost you less time in editing after the event is over. Less time, less money in the end. Also a floor plan. If you can get this for the event that you're speaking at, this is golden because then you'll know exactly the size of the room. You can tell your videographer or photographers where you want them to set up, what angles you want them to capture. It saves you trying to figure things out on the fly the day you're speaking when you're already, your nerves are on end and there's 50 million things going on. The last one is the angle. Okay, I just have to tell you, I don't like this picture because no one, no woman wants to see themselves from a shot from the side and my hands weren't clutching, you know, tightly the podium, but it just wasn't a very flattering picture. So I include that in my shot list. It, I don't want pictures from the side, get them from the front, or it has to tell part of a story. But this picture, just with me at the podium in a side shot, it doesn't really tell you anything that's going on. So I didn't see, you know, a lot of value in it. The bonus I'll throw in really quickly is try and plan for the unexpected. Make sure they have more than one video camera. I had a video camera die in the middle of my presentation. Didn't know it. It kept running, running, running. But when we looked at the footage after where it froze about the first five minutes in, so we missed all the footage. So if you can have them have more than one video camera, it can very much save you in the end. That's all I have. Awesome. We are clapping. Wow. What great jewels. Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to open it up for questions right now. We have time for about one or two questions. And then I definitely want to hear some of your takeaways, ladies. What were some of the biggest aha moments and takeaways from today? So any questions? Let's start with questions. Any questions? Any questions, ladies? I know someone asked about, um, Teresa, you have a question. Right. So I am just starting out, but I have years of experience in education. And so I've done numerous trainings and those type of things. How do I sort of kind of use that as I create my capability statements and, you know, my, my bio to show that I'm just new to entrepreneurship. I'm not new to the industry. 
Can I take that one? Be, because that one falls under very closely to capability statement. It's going to be the same advice we tell new startups. And then mm -hmm. speakers, if you all have any advice on that too, please chime in. Um, Teresa, what we tell women is that all of that matters. And so when you are creating your capability statement, which Keisha, I'm going to ask if you could put that link in the chat on how to create a capability statement. Um, when you're creating that statement, Teresa, it is mm -hmm. totally fine to, to transform or transfer that corporate experience. So if you were a leader and you manage $45 million in educational accounts or anything like that, mm -hmm. you're just going to move it over and says experience, you know, managing or budgeting $45 million in educational accounts. Um, if you work with um, key brands in your corporate space, you can list those brands down there. So many people will just literally transfer that great corporate experience over and show their leadership ability on that capability statement. And the video that we're going to put will show you how to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. And I also will put um, in the chat the five pricing strategies. I'm working on that right now. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Don Nicole, is it okay if I take 30 seconds and Please. just add to what you just said? Absolutely. So Miss Miss Teresa, you may be new to business, but you're not new to life. Your lived and your learned experiences are all your experiences, right? So you don't even have to let a corporation know that you're new to entrepreneurship because you're not new to life. You're not new to your learned and your lived experiences. So let that be your power. Thank you. Love I it. I am loving all of this. Thank <laughs> you. Love it. Other questions, ladies, other questions. For the speaker, someone asked about um, paying to speak. A lot of these people or organizations will try to make speakers pay. I want to know the speaker's take. So you facilitators, what is your take on people making our speakers pay to get on the stage? Let's hear from you. So I will jump on that because I'm going back and forth now with a leadership conference in Florida in the month of November and this whole back and forth with, um, and I told her flat out, I am not speaking on your stage and paying $699 to speak. You reached out to me. I have the receipts. I have the credibility and I will not pay. And so now she's taken away the payment and said, all right, we will pay you to speak, but can you pay for your flight and your hotel? So it's all these going back and forth and I am just laughing, but no, I am not going to pay to speak on your stage at all. That is Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Chef Maria. Yeah, I had that happen at a conference that um, and I won't say which one it was, but at a conference that I, you know, attended where I was a speaker one year and they you basically are paying to be on stage because you don't get any break on the registration for you fee for the conference and all your travel costs. And I did it one year. Uh, but after that, I'm like, no, that's that's not that doesn't even make any sense. Uh, so I don't think you should be paying to speak. That's that's not the right angle. No, and there's too many free um, out outlets, right? Like I know um, the chambers, the associations, the clubs, the Rotary Club, they are always looking for speakers. People are looking for speakers for their podcast. Um, there are other ways to get the message out without you having to come out of pocket. So I would definitely shy away from being uh, a paid, you know, from me paying to be on someone's stage. So- unless you have to build a very compelling business case. <laughs> so um, other questions. And if we don't have questions, let's give the speaker some takeaways. Yeah, Lauren, please. I'd like to ask a question actually. So yeah. I know we've talked about like free versus paid versus, you know, they're paying us. So I do, I'll just say, I do way too many free things. Um, so what I've realized throughout this is I was like, oh, I need the reps. I need the practice. It's like, well, at a certain point, it's like, you got your stuff, you know what you're doing. And it also devalues you if you continue to do stuff for free. So what I've started doing is I'm like, well, how about I host an icebreaker? How about I host this thing instead of the keynote? I'm not giving that away for free. So I would love to ask the speakers, do you ever do stuff for free? And do you modify your talks so that it's not your whole keynote so that you're like, well, I can't do this whole 60 minutes, but I'll do 30 or what, it, what have you done? Um, I'll let, uh, I have something I did to grow a brand, but I'll let the other facilitators share their answer. So I'll just, uh, so Lauren, there was one time when I negotiated with getting their email list. Um, because that was, they had a 10,000 email list. And if I had access to their 10,000 attendee, I it would be okay for me to speak for free as long as I sell my books and have access to, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, 
that was a win for me. I think mm -hmm. I ended up getting more than if they were paying me to speak because now I had a email list of 10,000 attendees. Yeah, I agree with what Joan just said. I did the same thing. I asked, you know, if you guys want me to speak for free, you definitely have to purchase my books or I at least have to have a table where I can sell my books, my t-shirts, whatever my merchandise is. So I have agreed to speak for free with something in return. And I want the photos sent to me as well. So I can use those photos later for marketing for myself. So you can, as long as you, I think Lauren uh, spoke about this yesterday and it was like, you know, what's in it for me, you know? So if they want you to speak for free, what's in it for me? I love that. And I'm sorry, I was smiling like a crazy person because I was taking a picture just now. <laughs> so well, oh, let's all just smile. Let's all do one. So okay, yeah, let's. Smile. All right, well, let's all do it. So, real fast, let's all smile. Ladies, are you ready? One, mm -hmm. two, and oh, let me get three. Got it. Awesome. Y'all are the best. Only women can do that on demand. <laughs> <laughs> um, real fast, I'll, I'll share one thing with our one minute left. Um, if you have created something new and unique and compelling, and you want to know how to go from zero to hero quickly, one of the things I did in 2020 that I talk about on YouTube, how I grew a brand very quickly, and y'all heard me talk about this, is I created my own tour, and I did a virtual speakers tour. And at the time, and you can look it up, it was called um, Understanding Agile Transformation in a New World, right? I was releasing a new product and I needed anyone who would listen in power, right, to hear this. And so I created a series on Eventbrite, totally free, never spent money. And it was every Wednesday I did this thing and I, I invited like HR leaders. I invited project managers. You all can look it up as a result of me doing that. This is how I got on bigger stages. This is how I got paid corporate gigs. And so Lauren, it wasn't all of the secret sauce. It was a small intro, right, to this new course, this new accredited course that I was promoting. And I built my own tour. And before you knew it, it built up in four months. And I had a list of a thousand people. I was making money and was being flown around. So you can start for free, right, leveraging the networks that you have. That's what I would say. I did my own thing for free. So, all right, ladies, if this was good, let's clap it up for the facilitators. Let's give them some love. This was awesome. And come back tomorrow for day three, where we are talking about the follow-up, I think polling and everything else, right, Lauren? What are we talking about tomorrow? Tomorrow. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. Yeah. Closing and capturing your audience. Yeah. Powerful slides. Take uh, calls to action. How to close your presentation like a pro. So wrapping everything. Wonderful. Same channel, same time. See you all tomorrow. Take care. All right. Thank you, ladies. Bye.